Welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Check, check, one, two. Testing. Check, check, one, two. Check. Earth, you got a copy. Welcome, friends and neighbors. Broadcasting from a confidential location in Coral Blade Grotto. Which you may be asking, why is he wearing that hat? Why has he got a coat on? As you may or may not know, if you visited the Coral Blade Grotto uh, Facebook page, you will know that Coral Blade Grotto is nestled in the depths of Antarctica. And we've been there, we've been located there for years now. At least four or five years, I think. So, that's why. Or it could be because I have hat head or bed head who knows anyways today i have another clever reaction video to our favorite uh provider of material the gift that keeps on giving rjg and this time i mean we got some stuff here all right we got some stuff that's going to be entertaining as all get out hopefully for you the viewer but also at the same time cultivating your knowledge with how the guy even though he's going on to podcasts and things like that the one thing that he never talks about are specific grammar mechanics. He never talks about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, mechanics. He talks about the now space. He talks about grammar in a general theoretical sense, but he never, ever talks about how it works. Literally. It's so simple, but yet he won't talk about it. Why is that? Is it because he's put whatever his idea of it is behind a paywall hmm. but let's check out the intro uh, to this show that I'm gonna be reacting to which I'm only using the audio I'm not going to use the YouTube video again because I have to be very careful because RJG and his cult uh, are on the watch for me using their videos to react to and uh, well you know what will happen then. They can't do anything with correct sentence structure, but they can darn sure complain to YouTube. Russell J. Gold, I am not your adversary. I'm on your team. 
I'm on, hey, I'm on Mankind's team. I love my fellow Mankind. Anybody who says they're on Mankind's team or anything like that, it's definitely a red flag for me. I mean, I say that I have a gift of over 500 videos. My gift to my fellow Mankind on my YouTube channel. I will say that. Um, however, you never hear Russell say anything like, you know, this grammar quantum gobbledygook is my gift to my fellow mankind. You never hear him say that, right? I love yes. the spirit of who we are. You know, because gifts don't come with price tags on them. The spirit world is so powerful. Yes, it, it controls this carnal thing, and and you know people by their by their actions. The spirit world controls this carnal world. Okay. We can certify and prove the carnal world, the physical world. Can you certify a spirit world? How would you do that as a fact? Just curious. By the yes. light in their eyes, by the reflections on their voice. You, and so I just want to share to your audience, you know, I love each and every one of you. Really consider grammar. Step out of the, the birth certificate. Russell says he loves each and every one of us. Uh, oh, my, uh, my survey says, has determined that to be a lie. I don't think he loves me. Look at system and really look at venue and location of where you're at and, and change that for your space. Cause you're all, so everybody has the right to be sovereign and have free choice. Everyone has the right to be sovereign. Rights come from an authority. That's why I don't participate with such a concept as rights. Okay? We don't need rights. Well, I don't need rights. I can't speak for you. I don't need rights. I just need correctness. I need rule one, rule equal. And to be a sovereign, one must be able to produce their own money, produce their own fuel, have their own land, make their own roads, so on and so forth. And I can't think of anyone who does that. My partner, I had a partner, David Hythewin, Colin Miller. And, you know, partners are very interesting in life. You know, it's like a real bad relationship, right? You learn a lot through the years. And I was very blessed to study and, and learn some of the linguistic things. And I did not concur with uh, some of the things that he chose to contract with. And I chose to stay out of those contracts. And then I was asked to come into them, but... Uh, you know, I, for me, it's about uh, sovereignty is about my my own journey and, and, and not joining up with the Clintons or the Rockefellers or the Rothschilds. That, that was not something that I am interested in. In fact, it was the exact opposite of what I'm about. I'm about the sovereignty of, of man and allowing us to govern ourselves and find our source, our creator, our God, and being one with our God. But I don't tell people and get into the uh, theology debate. Okay. He said a mouthful right there. He said, allowing us to be sovereign. Who is allowing us to be sovereign? In order to allow someone to do something, there has to be an authority in place. With children, it's parents. Parents allow their children to do this or that. If you participate with citizenry and you're part of a, a government, you, you submit to a government, the government allows you to do this or that. Okay, so he's talking about a system of an authoritarian system. As I've been saying for years, this guy is an authoritarian. He likes the chain of command. And then the next part he says is that he wants everybody to find their creator, their own God. Again, that is a violation of rule one, rule equal when you place anything above you. Everyone if you're going to participate with peace and neutrality, rule one, rule equal, is here on a geometric level playing field of contract. Once you start giving a chain of command, now you're unleveling that field. Now you're putting people above you. There is no rule one, rule equal. And especially if you're, if you're putting a, a god there, now you've given away authority to some intangible imaginary thing that you can't prove exists but probably 
through indoctrination and programming, you have been convinced something like that exists through nascience. Or, you know, faith can move mountains, right? I've never seen one mountain move anywhere through the facilitation of faith, okay? Think about it, folks. Now, this guy is pushing an authoritarian agenda. It's like Mark Lure Case K used to promulgate when he suggested that, you know, back in 2018, that I read The Starfish and the Spider, where you have two types of business models. One, or company models, would be a spider and a starfish. With the spider, you have the head of the spider, and then you have all the legs and everything, but the head is the head. And if you take the head off, it dies. But everything comes from the head. But with the starfish, if the starfish loses one of its legs, it just grows back. And it has four other ones to, to pull the weight until it grows back. You see what I'm saying? Mark used to preach that stuff all the time, but obviously he didn't follow his own advice because he has become the head of the spider in his own little business model. But it's the same thing with this guy. Very authoritarian. And now he's pushing a religious authoritarian agenda as well. He wants people to find God. Well, good luck with that, ladies and gentlemen. Like, I lost my cup. Oh, wait. Here it is. I found it. Mmm, I'm so happy that I found it. It's got some warm cappuccino in there. Okay, now go find your God in the same way I found my cup. And no, I will not wait for you. It's about what faith is to each person because I believe that's a very personal thing and a very private thing for each one of us to find what that is. Either, you know, if, we, if, we're, if you're into past lives, that's on you. If you're into God, that's on you. If you're into the Hindu, that's on you. Buddha, that's on you. That's every, that's, each person's journey to figure out what that means for them. Hopefully they find their source of God and it makes them a better person. It makes them, you know, live by a golden rule, rule where they where they learn to love one another, not engage in all this social engineering of this division. Okay. What he just said there was not half bad. Okay. Spirituality, even though I was kind of poking fun at it earlier, there's no denying that such a concept exists, just like the concept of God exists for some people. And if that's what brings people peace and makes them a better person, who am I to argue with it? I agree with the guy. Everyone has a personal journey to make as far as that goes if they choose to make that type of journey. I personally do not choose to make that type of journey. Okay? I, I have other spiritual avenues that I go down. Nothing to do with violating rule one, rule equal. And again, he's talking about um, finding that and making a better person. Let's go back 10 seconds and, and listen again. And it makes them a better person. It makes them, you know, live by a golden rule, the rule where, they, where they learn to love one another, not engage in all this social engineering of this division. Learn to love one another and not engage in social engineering and division. But what is this guy doing on his website? He has a whole, like, huge list of people that have refused to bow down to him, and so he disqualifies them, dismisses them, slanders them, badmouths them. And yet here he is talking about, love one another. Stop participating with this division. One side of his mouth says one thing, and the other side says quite another thing. Again, another contradiction. This Russell J. Gould is not the same Russell J. Gould that was in seminars with David Wynn Miller prior to 2016. No, this is a different guy. Apparently, maybe he's gone through some things to change, modify his mind to preaching these things rather than focusing on what one would guess would be the foundation of his whole thing, his whole shtick, and that's the grammar. But no, he's not talking about grammar, is he? No, he's talking about stuff that you can't prove. 
he's taught he's coaching people he's like like being a life coach here <laughs> nothing about the grammar and so with the quantum grammar system one of the foundations is is we we look at at the condition of mind and in my condition of mind i never let anyone tell me who to hate that's one no but you tell other people who to hate like a couple years ago when you were in a meeting and you called me a pos right um you tell other people what they hate and then your little followers started attacking me and leaving rude comments and using foul language and threatening me with physical violence i mean no one tells russell who to hate he's the one that does the telling now thinking about what he just said there okay they look at you know i mentioned oh he hasn't talked about the grammar and then he mentions quantum grammar, but then he doesn't talk about the grammar. He talks about a condition of mind. How can you look at a condition of mind using grammar the way he's talking about? I don't see it. However, I can offer a solution. My tutor, Colin Raven hyphen Farhad hyphen Tohidi Colin Afarin, created what's known as the Fate Writ Volition Claim where you can get a document contract postal vessel, you can create a document contract postal vessel court venue that gives closure to your condition of mind, your fate, writ, your volition. It's on paper what your volition is. And then you can be held accountable for it. But this guy's talking about guessing at someone's volition. He's going to guess at it. He doesn't know. He's just going to read something and then guess what the volition is which is no better than a judge's opinion just like in a fiction kangaroo court it would slide us into this debit and credit situation and and, and that's not who we are we're, we're 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 mankind we love our mankind we can go up and shake someone in the hand and be righteous with someone and say hey you know what that felt good to perform for that person Look, I got services back. That's a mutually beneficial arrangement, right? And this is what's really been lost. And that's why I focus so hard on the grammar is to bring transparency into the now space to where we use facts as the facts so that I feel good about what I've given my fellow, the service I've given my fellow mankind. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a public servant too. People are just learning how to interact with me and use what, what's been set up by in my paradigm of sovereignty, which has been my choice. My dream was early on, because see, to me, this sovereignty thing, Russell, was very sexy from the ground up. But my dream was to be able to bring all of you guys together and make almost a perfect cake. But the, because there's a little bit of dough in this thing, if you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of posturing, a lot of people trying to posture for position because they want to get to the dollars. And that's a problem. So I came in, you know, I love some of the stuff you teach. I love a lot of the stuff that uh, Jack and Margie Flynn teach. Uh, everybody brings value to the table. Everybody. Sure. Right. If we could have come together and teach uh, the people out there and get them cleaned up with the pineal glands, putting right foods in, get rid of the glyphosate, get rid of the, 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 the fluoride, get rid of all the pesticides, herbicides, all the bullshit. <laughs> OK, yeah. and clean up the pineal gland so that the pineal gland and your brain is able to absorb and learn the information. Now we got something. Yeah, I find that when you open up your root chakras and you allow your pineal gland to now open up to the to the consciousness that's out there, that right. is your position. of You learn from that consciousness. You learn from that that social position that you put your spiritual celestial realm into. But then you bring it back to yourself and say, now, how what the knowledge that I've learned? and I've comprehended to the best of my capacity, how can I now, how does that make me a better person for my fellow mankind? So we put, we put not only the humility of yourself and the meekness, because it's called being meek, which means teachable, right? If yeah. people ask me, how did I get through some of the things that I've been through, which has been very hard? I would tell you that I was very meek. Wouldn't it be wonderful, ladies and gentlemen, if this guy actions the way he behaved actually coincided with what's coming out of his mouth right now wouldn't that be wonderful that would be awesome i think so he said being meek means teachable 
Is that what it means? Let's find out. Meek does not mean teachable. Meek just means gentle or mild of temper. Sorry, Russell. Meek does not mean teachable. Um, so that's my gift to you, Russell. Uh, meek means mild and gentle of mind. Mm. I, I, you know, I got a lot of secrets from the federal judicial system, the World Court at The Hague, and the, when I took took those positions down it, on the grammar side, and I, I was meek. Again, my position on anyone that tells you that they're meek, they're humble, they're kind, they're loving, anyone that has to tell you those things probably are none of those things. For me... I would never, ever tell anyone that I'm humble, that I'm meek. The way I would phrase it, because grammar is the most important thing, right? I would phrase it like this. I do my best to cultivate humility. I do my best to perform as meekly as I can. I don't ever say that I'm successful at it, because it's not up to me to determine that, to be the judge of that. It's up to you. It's up to the people I interact with to tell me how I am or how I'm not. Whether I'm humble, whether I'm harsh, uh, you know, whether I'm meek. It's not up to me. And this guy has said like three or four times in the last 20 seconds that he's meek. And going out of his way to explain how he's meek. To me, those are red flags. And for my own personal interactions with this guy... And also from the dozens of testimonies that I've received in the confidential from people that have escaped from his little cult. They say the same thing. He is none of those things. That he is, um, I mean, even out of the mouth of Colin David Ife and Colin Miller, I heard him say, uh, you know, saying that, that Russell is basically bipolar. One minute he's nice and kind, and the next minute he's totally chaotic, totally angry, smashing things, throwing things, and flying off the handle. And that's coming from the mouth of Colin David I from Cola Miller. And I do believe that video is still on the internet somewhere. Uh, it was an interview or it was a Skype conversation that uh, the fellow from Portugal, Colon Leon Colon Edwards, had with David Wynn Miller. You can look out, look, look that up if you want to. With all the, the chipping, you know, I've, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people like Elon Musk. Well, I know Elon Musk financiers behind him, the ones that give him the money. And they're excited about his capacity to chip everybody. It's the number one thing they talk about. Oh, wow. we're going to get everybody chipped. And, 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 and that's not fair to fellow mankind because you're breaking into who we are. And we, as mankind, I don't give anybody permission to break into me. Yeah. I, 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 I've surrendered my, my, myself to my creator, to my contracts, to the things that I've had to do. And I don't want to trespass upon anyone else's function because I'm doing my own journey. Now, if others choose to commune and come into the venue through the flag and the mechanics, that's on them. And I will. The flag, which has a spire on top of it, which negates the constitution of the flag and announces that you're at war with your people. As per your own words. Do everything I can to give them the necessary transparency to uh, to give them closure on the fiction that was set up and a new system that they can be a part of. But that's only a foundation for them. It's up to them to create their world around that and just use the tenets and the things that are there. Because I don't want to trust, I don't want to tell people what to do. And I don't want to tell... You don't want to tell people what to do? people what to think so that's that's where the sovereignty for me is such an important thing i don't ask people to trespass upon my sovereignty and i certainly don't want people to ask me to trespass upon their sovereignty because i just won't oh, right? I, okay. I, I judge myself okay. i have a certain standards that i've had to live to and it's it's come at tremendous sacrifices and things that i love have, are gone and but i comprehend that because i do know now, as you and your audience does, you have to save yourself. And if you can't put the gas, there's a reason why when you're in an airplane 
And you, the first thing they say is, hey, if there's an accident, if these masks are going to fall out, put it around your face first, save yourself, and then you can start helping others. And so that's really the foundation that I've taken a look at in the quantum grammar field and fact versus fiction on the ground. The man is 100% correct there. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, out of this whole video, that's probably the most, to me, the most valuable thing that came out of it is that he's saying you have to save yourself first, which I mean, I don't know if you need saving or not. I'm, I don't, I can't see you or your situation. I certainly don't feel I need to be saved. But what I do is I participate with these three principles, the balance of the honor and the grace, position of peace and neutrality, and the maintenance of rule one, rule equal. And what this guy's saying is what I've been saying for the past few years, that if society as a whole is going to move in a more positive direction that benefits everyone, it has to come from an, on an individual basis. If you want other people to participate with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, autonomously, not as sovereigns, but autonomously, not as sovereigns underneath RJG's re leadership, no. If you want people to participate with autonomy, you have to learn the grammar first for yourself. You have to be able to perform with the grammar. You have to be able to know the grammar well enough to teach it to another individual in the now space, on the spot, like that. It starts with you. You can go around knocking on doors, spreading the good news of quantum grammar, but if you don't know it, nobody's going to believe you, and they're going to think you're cuckoo. But if you get closure on it for yourself, that in turn will draw people in who are congruent with your mindset of autonomy and then it will increase exponentially. It's a very slow process, of course, but it does start with you. Is I took it upon myself to go in the middle of the courtroom and humbly put myself on the line, put my body on the line and as the collateral, unfortunately, because that was the system that they had set up through the birth certificate where they were using this straw man to leverage and, and, and place a war against and put us in such bondage from cradle to grave <clears throat> that that did not allow the spirit of the God man within me to manifest out. And so I broke those bonds and I came up with the claim of the life system with David hyphen when Colin Miller, you know, when you're first out on a journey, cause you know, I've been at this 28 years now. So it's, been quite a journey and I've been through a lot of doors. You don't know who people are until you give them time. And that's what I would encourage people to to look at me and, and look at and you know, I, I'm looking at watching what others are doing. I'm seeing that we're very like minded. We don't want to be killed, right? Yes. Speaking for myself, I can definitely see who you are. Well, I mean, who you are now, as opposed to who you may have been years ago, before Colin David Eiffel and Colin Willer Miller passed away. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors, if you do your homework, and you do your research, and do your studying on the history of this grammar technology, how it began, and the phases it's gone through, you will find that in about the year 20... 16, 2017, a paper was released. I think it was called Operation Sheepdog or something like that. I don't know who it was authored by, but it goes through and tells a story of how quantum grammar came to be. And it gives 100%, well, it gives 99% credit to RJG. And like 1% credit to Colin David Eiffel and Wynn Colin Miller. And it's amazing to me that anyone read that with a straight face. When you go and look at the videos, you can plainly see that David Wynn Miller was the master. And Russell was the student. Russell's the apprentice. Russell was subordinate to David. David 
came up with the grammar or introduced the grammar. I don't know if he created it or not, but he certainly introduced it, right? He came up with all these court mechanics and stuff like that, and which brings me to another point that Russell talked about earlier in this interview where he said he learned the secrets of the judges. So he learned secrets of the fiction court, which what did he do? Everything that the, let's just put it this way. You got fiction, you got fact. Fact, in, in fact, the courts operate the same way as the fiction do, insofar as procedure. But where they differ is that this, the fiction, comes through with opinion because they use modification in their grammar. And the fact there is no modification, or is not supposed to be any modification. If you look at Russell's grammar, there's plenty of modification in it on every single page. And he doesn't even use the correct 1 by 1.9 flag because he puts a spear for nail on top of it, which means being at war with the people, as I mentioned earlier. But that's the difference. And it seemed to be a concerted effort by someone to bring RJG into the forefront and put David into the background. And lo and behold, in the next year, David's health took a nosedive. And Russell did this goofy-ass court-martial thing, which had no standing whatsoever because it was a military court-martial. Russell's never been in the military. And Colin David I from when Colin Miller was never in the military. Adjective, adjective, pronoun David when Miller was in the military, but not the punctuated name. So it's null and void anyways. And then that's when they broke apart and they were at each other's throats. And then that's, you know, shortly thereafter in 2018, David passed away. And that's when everything began changing. That's when Russell began trying to classify the grammar or whatever he knew of the grammar. He began charging money for live life claims and began saying that the only uh, authorized live life claims were the ones that worked, that everyone had to go and take what their old live life claim was and now get his autograph on it or thumbprint or whatever. If it doesn't have his thumbprint on it, then it won't work, which is a lie because I've been using my own live life claim, which I created with correct sentence structure for the last five plus years and been 100% successful with it. I don't need his authorization for anything. Knowledge is authorization. If you know what you're doing and you have knowledge, then uh, you'll be safe. You just have to know what you're doing. And on top of that, his claim to the copyrights is not even tenuous. It's less than tenuous because he admits to physically assaulting David Wynn Miller and forcing him to sign over the copyrights to him. And that's an act of war. War negates contract. And the grammar on the contract is not correct. I've seen it. So, long story short, let's wrap this up and see what they say at the end. I'm going to close out with this. Right now is at a different level than what the founding fathers had back then. But I believe the volition of the heart. I'm going to close out with this. Uh, I want to talk about one last subject, sh shift gears on you and okay. see how you react to it. The okay. Constitution of 1787 amended in 1791, the original Constitution of America. Where do you stand on it, Russell? Well, I rewrote those constructs in quantum grammar uh, back in 1999, 1998. And I started that rewriting in 1995. You know, I believe that the founding fathers had a volition to help our fellow mankind and to give us freedoms through natural law and natural and, and the things that they were studying at the, the information that they had in their space. And that's all I need to hear, ladies and gentlemen, because that right there is one of the biggest loads of BS I've ever heard. This nation, the nation he's talking about as far as the U.S. Constitution and things like that, is founded on genocide. It's founded on the subversion of another entire race. Now people may say, oh, well, the First Nations that were here were fighting each other all the time and they never owned anything. That's right. They didn't own anything because they didn't, they would never be so arrogant as to think that they owned land. 
the founding fathers and their families and whoever they were brought those concepts here. The natives would have never known about someone named Jesus Christ if it hadn't been forced on them under duress. Okay? The whole system is rotten from the get-go. And this guy wants to continue the system that's already in place, but use his quantum gobbledygook instead of plain English. Bottom line, end of story. I'm almost sick of saying this, but I will continue to say it because this guy is the gift that keeps, keeps on giving as far as material goes. He just keeps opening. It's like open mouth, insert foot. Every single time he's on a podcast. And if I catch it, or if someone sends it to me, I'll definitely react to it. And I know, I know it doesn't win me, or it doesn't give me any new followers. Actually, I lose followers when, um, or I lose subscribers would be a better word, when I do things like this. But that's okay with me, because I don't want those people here. I want the people here that want to be autonomous, and I want the people here that can see this guy for what he actually is and what he's actually doing. That's the bottom line. I mean, that's why I'm, I'm making these types of videos. I will, however, be throwing more grammar videos into the mix here. Even though I've got over 500 of them already on my channel, uh, it's always unique to have some nice new angles to look at the grammar from. So, never fear. I'll be doing some even with this dry erase board back here for you coming into the summer. Hope it's going to be a good year. I almost didn't make it to this year. I almost closed shop last December, if you remember some of the things I was saying. But thankfully, you know, things percolated in such a way that I'm still here doing this. And I will remain doing it as long as it remains feasible for me to do so. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel my gift to you my fellow mankind thank you again and i'll see you in the next one